Welcome to the Two Sons Podcast. Happy Monday, everybody. Hope all of you guys had a great weekend. Before we get started, it would mean a lot to us if you guys would take a few seconds to scroll down and hit that subscribe button. We're getting kind of, sort of adjacent to 1,000. We're getting close-ish. We're nearing. We're nearing. Yeah. We, are, we need a good, like, what, two? We're closer 30. to 1,000 than zero. That's true. Yeah. We're closer to 1,000 than 500. That's, Jay. That's good. Yeah. I. It's so funny when I see one of our comments and it'll be like, I know nothing about Star Wars, but I like Jason Timp, so so here I am. <laughs> we did have a comment the other day that was like, I just wanted to see Jason talk about something that's not Star Wars. I know, or not just, to, like, just oh. to see what it's like. Uh, it cracks me up, dude. So today we're going to be covering uh, one of Luke and I's absolute all-time favorite pieces of Star Wars content, uh, Darth Plagueis, and we're going to do... Uh, a, a, a pretty extensive summary of it because it, it kind of is an important piece of history in Star Wars. And again, like when we do these book reviews, we intend for them to be an effective replacement for somebody who doesn't have the time to sit down and read a Star Wars book. Which right. A, a lot of people are in that position or, totally. or, or, or prefer to do other things with their free time. So if you want to spend an hour and learn about Darth Plagueis, this is the place to be. And... The big thing with this book... You and I are legit Star Wars nerds. Yes, we like, are legit Star Wars nerds. There's no there's no doubt. I'm currently lis- listening to the Thrawn books through for the fourth time. So that's oh, bad. my gosh. By the way, the it side, helps me, sidebar... It like, disconnect mentally after a long day's work. Oh, just, isn't that the truth? Just, I want to hear Thrawn talk tactical genius into my ear <laughs> while I'm folding laundry or something or while I'm lifting weights. Jay, you know the book that we're reading right now? Um, what's it called? Uh, the one that you told me to read. Uh, oh, did you start it yet? I started it. Oh, shit. I haven't even started it yet. But here's my problem. It's called uh, Labyrinth of Evil. Yeah. Here's my problem. It's between movies two and three. Um, I legit got three pages in and fell asleep. <gasps> I am such a slow reader, my guy. Oh. It is going to take me forever. Okay, well, it's a good thing you started because I'm finishing Vector Prime before I start that, and I still have like about 50 pages left in Vector Prime. Here's Chewie, the other thing, Chewie too. just died. Oh. Yeah, it was yeah. bad. Died um, saving uh, Han Solo's kid's life, and Han Solo blames the kid. Ooh, that's not good. Yeah. Yeah, that's well, rough. That's, well, that's a gnarly. That's quite the fold. The Yuuzhan Star Vong Wars. are also fucking shit up in this book. <laughs> like, they are, like, they just crashed a moon into a planet oh and murdered my gosh. millions of people. Like, now they're sending a massive invasion force to Lando Calrissian's business venture out in the asteroid belt. I'll tell you, thing. crashing a moon into a planet is, is a pretty big power move. Yeah, that's how Chewie dies, man. Chewie, Chewie dies, turned, arms up, screaming at the asteroid. Ah! Just as it very, crashes into him. Yeah. Very Wookiee-esque. Han watches yeah. it, though. Oh. Yeah, bummer, big bummer. Don't like that. But anyways, yeah, it's going to be a complete problem, and it's going to take me forever to get through the book because I just get too sleepy, dude. The other thing, too, is I feel completely illiterate when I read. <laughs> like, dude. <laughs> like, I can read medical stuff just fine. I had to read the first sentence, no joke, the first sentence three times of that book. It That is a dense sentence. We'll have to we'll have to pull it out on the next pod. Okay. I even I even showed it to Elena. I was like, Elena, am I an idiot? Am I a complete dumbass? Or can please, I not figure out this sentence? Please read this <laughs> sentence and tell me what it means. James Luceno is a really really good Star Wars writer, but he's definitely more on the eccentric side. Yes. He's not a Drew Carpishin. Where you got it. Like, and then he cut his fucking arm off and he started <laughs> bleeding everywhere. <laughs> it's not. It's not like there's definitely a lot of googling of words I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So there's that. Anyways, Plagueis. But yeah, you will eventually finish it and it's okay if it takes a little while so one of the cool things about Plagueis is there are literally as we're going through this a half dozen truly iconic Star Wars moments I think even more and the book opens up with a very important one so Darth Plagueis is currently the apprentice of a Darth Venomous who's a Bith his real public name is actual public personality if you guys remember with from Darth Bane Bane and Xana both had um Both had specific, uh, I think it was Sep Omek was, yeah. I can't remember exactly what their names were. Do you they remember were known. I can't Bane remember and the names. names. No. But they were like public people on Sutric 4, right? And that yeah. was that was like the, because the Sith are big on like Sutterfuge and they need to exist within the public realm and they need to manipulate things behind the scenes. So right. Rugis Gnome is a Bith who is a like a genius ship designer, basically. And, and the Bith are like these genius scientists. And they, they keep referring in the book to a concept called Bith science, which yeah. they actually say is like so 
sophisticated actually rivals the force in some ways in terms of power in the sense that like bith science because like like even even when it came down to breeding i feel like it's like the the equivalent of like calculus versus algebra mm -hmm. in regards to like scientific measure oh yeah well they even say that like the bith like would like specifically like breed two people together to try to make like the perfect like they're very much like a science based species right, right. but anyway that's his his actual name, but his 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 uh, uh, dark side, you know, entity is known as Darth Tenebrous, who is the Dark Lord of the Sith, right? And so we meet Darth Plagueis, who is the uh, he's immune, right? So think in Star Wars, the banking clan will find your <laughs> Jay, Like just think. that'll be a meme someday. <laughs> Great job. <laughs> so the the that's that's Darth Plagueis, right? That's not actually Darth Plagueis, but that's his species. Yeah. He is bankers um, and lawyers. He is his actual name is Higo Damask, and he is the chairman of a uh, financial entity on on Munalinst known as Damask Holdings. Yeah, right? unfathomable wealth. Unfathomable wealth. Right. So they're on this planet uh, called Bel Baldemnik. This is what it's called, and they are there on a hunch that this company called Subtext Mining had given Rugis Gnome uh, about a potential cortosis vein and remember cortosis is a very special metal as it pertains to uh um <clears throat> a, a basically uh, diminishing the effect of lightsabers right it's it's it, extremely durable if you hit something with cortosis with your lightsaber it would just automatically turn off yeah. like it's a huge deal right and we actually know that palpatine secretly is uh, weaving cortosis into st uh, clone trooper armor and droid armor from our uh, Thrawn book, the the one with Dark Vader, Dark Dark Vader, Darth Vader. Yeah. The, <laughs> we're, 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 so like, th they actually do end up going back and getting this um, cortosis, right? But while they're there, the subtext mining people apparently hated Rujus Gnome. So they they secretly get him to try to uh, dig with his mining droid where there's actually like a like a pocket of lethane, which is like this flammable gas, and it's about to blow up. The droid ignores their commands and keeps drilling. So clearly, it's like an assassination attempt. So Ten Tenebrous and Plagueis like run back to their ship, and then it explodes, and the cave starts coming down. And Plagueis looks, and he sees Darth Tenebrous like holding up pieces of the of the thing, and Plagueis just goes like. Hmm. This is my chance. This is a great opportunity. So Plagueis like reaches up and pulls down with the full power of the dark side and just crushes Darth Tenebrous, right? Yes. So and then you have having like this little interaction on the ground where like Tenebrous is like, you must continue the imperative. And then like as he's dying, he's like, Oh shit, it was you, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and then and then like any true, you know, Sith master, he's like, You got me. Good job. Yeah. You know? It, it's 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 peak. It's 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 one of the peaks of of you know Sith lore. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and it, well, and like it's funny too because to that point, Plagueis is literally like, he's like sitting there like, don't worry, master, like I'm gonna continue the thing and blah blah blah. But at the end, like Tenebris kind of looks around and they're in this like cave and the ship gets destroyed in the mm -hmm. cave. And so yeah. Tenebris is like, oh, Plagueis is gonna die. Like this right, is, and so then, then he starts like, berating Plagueis. Yeah, he starts berating Plagueis. It's so funny because he like he, Plagueis just. A, a, essentially killed him he's still alive barely and he's like dude you messed up like you need to continue our our hatred for the galaxy like how did you how did you put yourself in the position like this and yeah he's, he's not even mad that Plagueis tried to kill him he's mad that Plagueis might die and that the Sith might and go the with Sith it. might die yeah. so what's so funny is Plagueis gets so irritated from Tenebrous chastising him that he karate chops him in the neck <laughs> and kills him <laughs> like true story that's what happens <laughs> So then, uh, so then Plagueis basically gets out of the cave and he ends up finding his way to a, a, a ship and he gets on the ship and he gets off the planet. Right. No big deal. And uh, yeah, also has, he takes like Rugis Gnome's lightsaber and clears all the data off the ship so that they make sure that there's no uh, way for them to find anything out. He does ask uh, Tenebris right at the end, like, hey, who told you about this? Because clearly someone had tried to assassinate mm -hmm. you. And he and also Plagueis straight up says like Rugis Gnome had enemies. And this yeah. is a consistent theme throughout the book. Like, when you're in the public eye and you're manipulating things, like you also create enemies. And Dude, when you're in the public eye, too. period, even if you're just going about your business, people will hate you if if you're well known enough. Exactly. Like take take your podcast for example. Like you get thousands and thousands and thousands of views. There are some people that literally hate your guts for for no reason. Dude, the the craziest thing, and it's not even on the same level as any sort of real public figure. But the 
I I have people who hate watch the show. I know. Like they watch it because <laughs> they hate me, and then they watch it and they talk shit every single day. It's the weirdest thing. It's so weird. Yeah, it's, it's truly anyways, bizarre. It's, but uh, yeah, honestly, I will say this though: the positive energy I get from the show so greatly outweighs that that oh. I, I, that it's it's, well, it's it's I'm not complaining. In yeah, any way, dude, you've got a great product. But anyways, if you're big enough, people hate you, and if you're a Sith Lord, people, people will really hate, hate you. you. Yeah, yeah. So, or if you're if you're running a, a huge financial group that squashes the little guy, or even squashes other large financial groups, mm-hmm. like that's a really good way to to create some enemies as well. Yeah. So they get off the planet, or uh, uh, Plagueis gets off the planet, uh, ends up murdering everybody on the ship, and it's this really cool scene where like uh, there's a droid called One One Four D who is who's on this ship and is working for this group of smugglers. And and literally, uh, we have my Great Pyrenees rip is laying on the ground in between us here. Um, <clears throat> while they're in there, one one four D basically narrates the murdering. So it's like one one four D's receptors could barely pick up the blur as it came from the back of the ship. <laughs> yeah. Suddenly, the, 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 he registered his heartbeat dying once. You know, like <laughs> it, it, it is. And Plagueis is just running through the ship, just 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 killing everybody right right and then eventually 114d ends up serving him at the end which is so funny because uh plagueis kind of feels out 114d and then plagueis realizes that that 114d is actually a huge asset he's actually a medical droid yeah that's what they said yeah Mm. and then 114d has zero zero loyalty for his previous master he's just like yeah i'll be your droid yeah well sure. it's th- I, that we were talking about droids in the rebel moon episode that we just recorded and like again this is another thing in star wars where it keeps them from being overly human like droids are like immensely loyal to whoever their owner is yeah so like it, it almost leads you to believe like if if, if you and i went and robbed c-3po away from fucking luke that he would just be like all right i'm with you guys now right like, it's just kind of what they do that's and what's so funny is like they're very very loyal but their loyalty can change. Yeah. If that, if yeah. like they'll do anything as they're in service to their master. As soon as their master is no longer there, they serve another. Yes. Essentially, yeah. So one one four D becomes Plagueis's droid, and, and basically the 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 next chunk of the book kind of introduces you to some base concepts, like you. Uh, like they, they they introduce you to Munilence, which is like such an advanced planet that they it's so beautiful they don't want to poison the sky with ships. So they have what's called a sky hook, which is basically like a giant tube that connects outer space to the lower level and all the ships have to go through it so that they don't have like a bunch of like Coruscant like sky lanes that are full. It's really cool. There's an island on Munilence called Sojourn. And on this island, uh, uh, Higo Damask hosts these like bougie ass gatherings for all these insane rich people. And then basically what he does is he uses the cloners on Camino to clone all of these like ancient species. Some of them are extinct. There's but like there's rankers and there's all this other yeah. stuff running around. And so they basically have like a giant hunting party. Just like rich, drunken debauchery. Yes. Like rich weird people stuff. And they, they talk a lot about like um like ple- they use the word pleasure mm-hmm. a lot. Oh yeah. And and you kind of have to like infer some things. Yeah. Like, what are we talking about yeah, when we use the word pleasure the, in this the, situation? They're doing the weird shit. They're doing some weird stuff. They they have Dude, a Lord Baelish there that's doing all the weird shit. <laughs> Isn't it so interesting that we're talking about this podcast like right during like the week that like the Jeffrey Epstein the stuff Jeffrey, gets yeah, released? Yeah, that's literally what I was thinking about too. I'm like, this is all the the, the weird uh, like galaxy Jeffrey Epstein yes. creepy shit that yeah. they're doing. So uh, w- what's really interesting too is you make, you guys remember in Game of Thrones? Luke won't remember this because he doesn't know. <laughs> I'm just re- my wife and I are just now rewatching it, and we're uh, just a couple episodes before Battle of Blackwater Bay, so we're like late season two. And uh, there's multiple scenes that have taken place to this point where, like, the lord or the king or, or whatever will basically receive uh, a subject who will then pitch them on a thing. Like, like one of them recently was like, hey, my, my sons are off fighting your war. Like, I need help with my sheep. Mm. And then uh, Bran Stark, who's acting lord of Winterfell, is like, well, I have these two orphans. They can go with you. You can take them. And, and and you guys can kind of move on, right? So, like, that ends up happening with Plagueis. These people start coming in to, like, visit him. Right. And at one point, Gardula the Hutt comes in. Yeah, this is cool. And she's like, yo, I want to launch a pod racing track on Tatooine. Uh, of all places. like. But here's the thing. The Gran. Now, remember, the Gran are the three-eyed uh, cows. And this is all part. This is, like, massive story building for Star Wars. They run a pod racing track on Malastare. Yeah. And it is a direct competitor to them. And so this is kind of like the beginning, 
because Plagueis agrees to help Gardula the Hutt fund her her pod racing track. He gets a take, like he gets a percentage of it. It's this whole thing. And literally, it's the first step in him kind of screwing over the grand. Yeah. And then the grand come in next, and they're like, did you just cut a deal with Gardula yeah. the Hutt? And he's like, none of your business. Maybe. I don't business, know. It's not your man. business. Dude, uh, so Jay and I love when uh, when a writer relating to Star Wars content or a producer, whomever, mm-hmm. understands the bigger assignment. Yeah. And and um, the author of this book, James Luciano. Mm-hmm. Did I say that Luceno, right? Luceno, I think. Luceno. Mm-hmm. Just understands the assignment every single time. The fact he he spends so much time uh, trying to pull bigger pieces together, it, it's it's remarkable as a as a Star Wars nerd to go through his yeah. work. Like the, just understanding where Tatooine pod races came from, which sets the stage for Anakin Skywalker. Like understanding the backstory on that is incredible as a nerd. They they go into incredible depth breaking down. All of the reasoning behind major Star Wars events that take place in the movies throughout the book. It is so... If you enjoy the deep Star Wars lore, you will not enjoy a book more than you'll enjoy Darth Plagueis. Right. It is, it's so good on that front. Um, so, subtext mining comes in next. Because Plagueis just extends an... Or Higo Damask, I should say. Just extends an invite. And they're like, hey, thanks for having us on. We're having so much fun. <laughs> and Plagueis basically goes like, like basically just comes out and accuses them of, of murdering Rugis. No, they right. panic and freak out. And right at the last minute, they're like, we'll give you, we'll give you Naboo. There's all this plasma on Naboo. Blah, blah, blah. Like he's they, about they're to kill pleading him. for their life because oh, he's about oh. to kill them. No, he's about to put them into like a gladiator style arena where yeah. they're about to get killed by whatever beast is out there yeah. at the moment. He was about to release them into the forest, I think, and without weapons. there's this, this lift and they're about to be essentially executed in front of other people yes. and they're on the lift getting ready to be lifted up into this this stage and then that's when they spill the I beans forgot. about yeah, the, that's how they the plasma him. veins mm. on Naboo so then of course this is literally how you get to mask responds he's like okay he's like while we're researching this uh, he turns to his sun guard and he's like I want you to go drop them in the most remote system in the tingle arm and leave them there until a we are needed, right? But which and like they're they're going to be fed. They're yeah. not just going to be like you know marooned somewhere. Yeah, like they're, they're just left there. They're it's basically there. like space jail. Yeah, it's space jail. Yeah. They're very far away. But if we, if we won't because we won't come back to this. But eventually, there's a point later on where subtext mining does something else sketchy again, and so then Plagueis actually has all of the subtext mining guys murdered and dumped on the front porch of like the subtext mining headquarters or something. I like thought it was that. Uh, Valorum. Valorum. <laughs> Wasn't it Valorum? Uh, I can't remember where he dumps. He dumps them public, and I somewhere. can't remember why he got pissed off at yeah. him again. But there was because so, th- this book is ex- a long. There's a lot, there's a lot the of stuff that goes on. <laughs> but after this party, right? So they're having this party. You know, we have the Gardula the Hut, we have the the Grand, we have the the subtext mining people. Well, uh, Darth Plagueis is like kind of just sitting up on his balcony, just kind of relaxing at the end of the night, and suddenly he senses. Something trips the 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 sensor. Yeah, but then but then sensors. he senses that this being has like the power of the force, and so he's like, "Did the Jedi come here?" And so so he like jump literally jumps from the wall, like like literally, and just starts running into the forest like a badass. And then immediately he's like, "Oh shit! Like I probably shouldn't have done that because yeah. like what if it is Jedi? Then but they'll then, know a Sith exists." But then he ends up running into another Bith. So the same species of Darth Tenebris, and it's a it's a Sith Lord with a red lightsaber, and he introduces himself as Darth Venomous, Darth Tenebris' apprentice. And so Darth Plagueis is like, this moment. Wait, no, I'm <laughs> I'm the apprentice. To apprenti? To, to, We're, to apprenti? We are apprenti? <laughs> so uh, so Plagueis is like, uh, in his head, he's like, is this like a last test from Tenebris, or did he not trust me? Like, what's the deal? Blah, right. blah. Well, they kind of like have like a little barking match at each other, and then eventually Plagueis is like, just let's just fight. So, yeah. <laughs> so they end up having. And there's this cool moment where like Plagueis is like fighting with him, and he's like, he's like, he's kind of narrating himself, and he's like, I, he's like, I always found lightsaber fighting to just be so stupid and pointless, yeah. like because he's very Plagueis is very much like on the big picture scale of the force. He, is. he actually says in the book, he's like. Martial prowess is the most rudimentary expression of the force's power. Just something Darth Bane says as well. But like, essentially, he—it's a means to an end. Mm-hmm. Is, is what it is. So Plagueis ends up defeating Venomous, 
purely out of him just being stronger in the force yes. and just more of a badass, not because of his you know lightsaber wielding abilities. Exactly. And so he, when he defeats Venomous, Venomous actually ends up taking a knee and pledging his service to Plagueis as his apprentice. And Plagueis is like, "Why would I take you as my apprentice? I would never be able to to to, to not have to look behind my back right. and look for you." So so instead, he's like, "Eat that flower there on the ground," and it ends up being some sort of paralytic, and so he gets paralyzed. And Plagueis basically keeps him in a bag in like some sort of like uh, medical facility for the rest of his life and uses him for all of his experiments on the right. force, which, which is, is basically what he does. Which is very heavy in trying to extend life mm. and, and bring life back from death. Major so, plot point in the book. Yes, yeah. major mm. plot point in the book. I'll yeah. let you proceed. So from there, Venomous actually has like a list of, of force sensitive people that he was exploring oh, yeah. to potentially use for uh, apprentices or, or, or as an apprentice. So then the next phase of this book is this interesting like three part phase where like Plagueis goes to explore these these four sensitive people, and they end up essentially all getting killed by Plagueis. Right, and they're all weirdos. T- talk about the uh, tell them about the the, the preacher one because that one was oh, my favorite. Oh, dude, it's so weird. So so he he it's a woman, right? Yes. Of and at what planet of... was it? Do you remember? I can't remember the planet. Essentially, because she's force sensitive, she has the ability to to she's have some foresight. Oh, is she? Yeah. So she's same as Darth. Uh... Cognis. And she, uh, yeah, so she has the ability to, to foresee, you know, s- a hazy version of what the future is. Yes. And and actually, she's spot on on some of her or her um, guesses, guesses and, and the fact that, like, she understands that there's going to be, like, massive war. And she basically foretells the Sith taking over the galaxy. Yeah. And, yeah. like, and like the Clone Wars, essentially uh, a rudimentary version of the Clone Wars. Anyways, she has all these weird, weird followers that are all essentially just kind of like a bunch of young people, mm-hmm. right? That are just all she, lost And she's souls. street preaching. Yeah. Yeah. She's street preaching and they all gather around her and then he just goes and, and murders her, right? So, yeah, it's he goes up to her after the speech and then he like kind of holds her hands and then she's like, holy shit, you're the guy. Yeah. And then he goes like. Your message is right, but it's way too soon. And then he literally shoots lightning into her body, <laughs> through her hands, cooks her alive, yeah. drops her and walks away. And then and then uh, uh, I vaguely remember what happens, but as he's walking out, essentially, her followers understand what just happened. And he's like, yeah, you got to go check that out. Yeah, you got to go check on her. <laughs> yeah. The other two are like, we won't get into them, but there was like one that was like a deviant who liked to like Can kill. I, he just loved to kill critters yeah, he had like or something. Yeah, like a fetish with and like then there killing was a small animals. Yeah. There was a shapeshifter. It was like a shape-shifting oh, yeah, shape- gambler yeah, who kept cool. going to every single casino and like ripping them off uh, uh, yeah. and, and, and was like a changeling. So anyway, after he uh, destroys all Venomous' apprentices. Oh, wait, really quick on the changeling thing. He doesn't kill that that one, right? Doesn't he allow him to live? Oh yeah, yeah. He goes. He goes. You can go win one more time, and then you take the cash and you disappear. Yeah, that's basically what he said. I wonder why he let him live. Well, so one of the things he found out too is like the guy was stealing and then giving all the money to like Wraith Sinar or something like that because he was in debt. He was or in something debt. Like yeah. That. It was. It was. They, they do a lot of background uh, description of like some of the major uh, commerce players in the galaxy. Uh-huh. Like like Signer Systems is is basically the the uh, ship builder that created like the tie fighters and a lot of the uh, the uh, imperial you know weaponry. Mm-hmm. It's it's all it's all really interesting. We can get in the weeds for hours if we wanted to. But the gist of it is is Dar- Darth Plagueis ends up researching the subtext mining name drop of Naboo and it turns out that yes, there's a gigantic plasma reservoir that's literally right underneath the city of Thea. Yeah. So what they end up doing is uh, there's a, an election between these two members of the uh, Naboo government, and one of them is like an old-fashioned like royalist who does not want to join the Republic. Which happens to be Palpatine's dad. Well, Palpatine's right? dad isn't the guy who'd be running. He just supports that right. faction. Okay, yeah, yeah. And then uh, the uh, then there's Plagueis is trying to support, I think his name is Bon Tapolo, or uh, It was either that. Yeah, it was Bon, Ta- bon Tapolo because it's Bon Tapolo and then it's Ars Veruna is after that. But Bon Tapolo is this guy that he wants to elect to the uh, to the uh, king of of Naboo, so that they can join the Republic, negotiate a deal with the Trade Federation, build giant space hangars and docking facilities, uh, like uh, basically like plasma. basically like bring the uh, Naboo, and it's and it's going to funnel all this money back into the uh, basically all the rich people on Naboo. It's like right. uh, uh, more examples of like kind of like uh, uh, like you know the rich get the stronger. rich get richer kind yeah. of idea, right? So 
as they're working this out during the 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 uh, the election, there ends up being a mystery kind of person who's leaking information to Plagueis' camp, and it turns out it's Palpatine who hates his dad and really thinks that uh, Naboo should enter into the galaxy at large. And so, literally, uh, Plagueis starts like meeting. It goes to meet Palpatine. And like immediately starts to pick up on this weird thing where like he can't sense the power in him, yeah. which freaks him out because he's like, there's clearly a lot of power there, but I can't like quantify it. So like something's going on. And over the course of the next like uh, several months, he's basically like manipulating Palpatine into trying to emancipating himself. Right. And at one point, Palpatine's dad actually abducts Plagueis <laughs> and yes. threatens him and is like, stay away from my kid. Or I'm, you know, and of course, Plagueis is never in any real danger because no. he can just, you know, murder everybody on a moment's notice. But he gets threatened heavily. Essentially, what ends up happening is Pla- uh, Palpatine's dad wants to keep Palpatine away from Plagueis, and so he tries to remove him from Naboo and like take him to some charter school on like another planet or something. Right. And on that ship, he murders his entire family. Yeah, and 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 um, that's a really interesting scene because it's a it's a common theme with Dark Lords of the Sith where. They actually have relatively benign and and normal beginnings, right? Mm-hmm. Like, like, don't get me wrong. Palpatine's a complete weirdo, and you know he's a weirdo from the start. Like, he he's involved in. He was like street racing. Yeah, or he was something. street racing, and he killed somebody, and he killed somebody, racing, yeah. and just because his family's powerful, he had like no repercussions for it. And he he's kind of like, eh, like okay, I killed somebody, but my love is like street racing, like no big deal. So like you know, he's he's definitely like f boy, you know. Yeah, oh yeah. But but he does have some level of panic and guilt after he kills his entire family. Oh yeah, which yeah. is a recurring theme in Star Wars. Is like the Sith. The first time they do real Sith shit, they're always like. Oh fuck! Yeah, like, that, that, that was, was gnarly. Intense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is this okay? <laughs> yeah, because he like he straight up murders. His father, yeah. then murders his mother, and then murders his brothers and, and sisters. And Plagueis, like, like, essentially, like, gave him the building blocks to do that. And essentially, like, poisoned him into thinking, like, okay, I need to do this. And mm-hmm. then after he does that, he's like, why did you Why did you tell me to do this? You know, and Plagueis is like, I didn't tell you to do that. Yeah. You did it. Yeah, th- this, is, this next part is my favorite part of the book. Uh, and every time I listen to it, I'm like, this is so cool. So... Palpatine calls Plagueis and is like, I just killed my whole family, you know? And, and like, and, Pla- and then Pla- Plagueis is like, I didn't ask you to do it. You know, like, he's like, but he's like, congratulations on emancipating yourself. And he gives him some very explicit instructions on yeah. like who to call, like, just stay put. Like, we're going to come scrap the ship for you. And they basically get rid of the ship and make sure there's no evidence because obviously it's very important for Plagueis that Palpatine remains, you know, completely dirt free because right. he's going to be a politician in the future. So then comes this moment. It's a week later and they're finally together and it's Plagueis and Palpatine and they're hanging out in this room. And Palpatine's like, dude, it's been a week. Like, what's the deal? And then Plagueis is like, dude, I'm busy. Like, yeah. yeah and like, and you decided to kill your family. Like, I wasn't going to be able to just drop everything and get there, right? Dude, I know. So that part this, was so funny. Then it gets. And he's like, oh, it's been a week already? He's acting like he didn't know. Yeah. It, has it been a week already? Yeah. yeah. It's so funny. So literally, they're in this room. And uh, at this point, like, Plagueis, like, it, like, has this because there was an earlier moment where he wanted to reveal himself but he did it mm-hmm. and so then Plagueis is like all right I'm, I'm gonna do this and so he basically goes like have you ever heard of the order of the sith lords yeah and then Plagueis is like some sort of or Palpatine, or Palpatine. Is like some sort of like you know like jedi break off sect or something like that and he starts to kind of reveal himself and at first like Palpatine's like like oh you're just like a weirdo like 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 cult like cultish kind of yeah. guy right but then uh, uh, Plagueis basically starts to like be like, you don't even understand how powerful you can be, all this kind of stuff, blah, blah, blah. And at one point, Palpatine gets a little pissed off and like gets angry. And then like there's this moment where uh, Plagueis just goes like, like, careful boy. And then when he says careful boy, like all of a sudden Palpatine like tries to sense Plagueis' power and like shudders. And he's like – and then – and Palpatine's like, I can feel it. And, he, and, and, and then Plagueis is like, and what you sense is only a tiny like fraction, fraction of the power that I can bring to right. bear. Like, and so he basically like threatens Palpatine. Really cool scene where he basically reveals himself. And, and then Palpatine ends up basically agreeing. Yeah. And then we go into this next phase of the book, which is like this 10... Did you have a follow-up well, on so that Well, so Palpatine too, 
wants to join Plagueis because doesn't Palpatine want change in the galaxy? Like he does. It, it, I think he also wants to explore his own power. I right. Think that was it's the it's a part. combination of things where he's like, I could make true change in the galaxy. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, it's nice. <laughs> well, and so the the next part of the book is something I found really interesting because we're gonna when we get to the end of the book because the end of the book is really ruthless as mm-hmm. as we'll get to. There's this interesting idea of like the Sith Lords like kind of hating each other. Mm -hmm. And literally like from the beginning, Plagueis straight up tells Palpatine, he's like, I am your torturer. I am the, I am the one you will despise more than anything in the galaxy, but I'm the one who's going to teach you everything you can know and help you reach your potential. Right. So they kind of flash forward through all these different scenes. Like at one point, Palpatine is freezing cold on Maigito, which is like this planet where there was a Clone Wars battle that we actually see in the uh, Revenge of the Sith movie. But they're, uh, it's ice cold, ice cold planet. And it, P- Plagueis is just like standing there wearing barely anything, but he can use the power of the force to basically warm himself so he's fine. Right. And Pal- Palpatine's there just like freezing his balls Miserable. off. You know? and like, and, and Palpatine's like, or Plagueis is like ripping his shirt open to make him cold, even more cold. And like, and, and he's torturing him. And then at one point, Pla- uh, Palpatine's like, how long is this going to take? And then, and then, uh, Plagueis is like, it depends, but he's like, not a day sooner than 10 years. So they keep skipping forward. There was like one where they just are randomly like killing all these beasts in a field. Right. There's one in the future that comes later in the book, this really cool one, which I, I think is a really interesting concept where basically the, the order of the Sith Lords had an awareness of all of these planets that were off the galactic record. Mm-hmm. And so they were essentially great places for the Sith to train. To do weird Sith things. Yeah. And oh, this next caught. part is cool. I know what you're yeah. about to talk about. So they literally show up on this, <laughs> this primitive planet. So cool. Some ancient Sith Lord found this planet. Again, just an absolute Star Wars gem that only oh, yeah. like true Star Wars nerds will know about. And it's just so cool. It's it, so cool. Anyways, continue so on, please. Each Sith Lord over the previous millennia that shows up, they have different weapons. So, like the first time they're like wooden clubs and then like the next time yeah. it's like they've got knives and then the next time they've got like the the what the most recent time they show up they have like bows and arrows and like right. other stuff like that but basically and they build the this this um like primitive group kind of like build these like structures around like to like worship them. to worship the Sith lords yeah. yeah and then and then Plagueis says too he's like we don't know if they love us or if they hate us but it's our tradition to show up unannounced to this planet and do our thing so they basically show up and then the group sends like a group of warriors to fight the Sith Lords. Which is tradition for them. Yes. Like it's a, 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 a vision, like godlike structure shows up in a starship, lands, and then they're like, all right, boys, you know the drill. Yeah. Let's go get killed. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's it's completely off the galactic map. So like yeah. they don't even, like these people are primitives. So they, yeah. they have no idea, right? So, and what's cool is the uh, Palpatine and Plagueis kill them with stun weapons. They don't mm-hmm. kill them. They just start or, them yeah, all. They, yeah, they don't actually kill them. And then, mm-hmm. and then finally, like, they just decide to kill one. And, so and they Plagueis, always kill just one. They, and, and Plagueis rips the dude's heart out. And then he kind of, like, teaches Palpatine a lesson about, like, how, like, you terrify one, you terrify a thousand, kill one, terrify a thousand, or something like that. And then they, like, take a bite out of the heart, and, like, he passes the heart to Palpatine, and Palpatine, like, takes a bite out of the heart. (laughs) It's ruthless. It's all part of this, like, Sith training scene, and it it is all really, really cool. What's crazy, too, is, is if I remember right, and don't let me misspeak, um, but the the people, the the primitive uh, people... They start to like cheer after the guy gets killed, right? Yeah. Well, they're, I think they're terrified at first and then they cheer or it's something so like that. It's so weird. It, 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 but they also like offer, they also like make like food offerings and stuff. Like they do like all it's sorts bizarro. of weird, weird stuff. And then through all these scenes too, Plagueis is like constantly lecturing Palpatine on like the Order of the Sith Lords. And they do, one of the cool things too is the book functions as like a history of the thousand years mm-hmm. from Darth Bane to, to where they are. And like we learn that. Uh, Darth Cognis, I believe her apprentice is Darth Millennial. And then Darth Millennial ends up, uh, like, he has, like, some weird interpretation of the Sith Lords that d- ends up being a problem. I think Cognis has to kill him and takes on a different apprentice. There's, like, another one later on where, like, one of the apprent- uh, one of the Sith Lords turns to the light side. Oh, yeah. Because mm-hmm. he views the dark side as, like, self-defeating. And the apprentice actually like finds out that the master is like destroying all of the Sith artifacts inside this temple. It breaks into the temple and kills 
her master to save the Sith. And that's actually where the uh, essence transfer holocron is lost and that process is lost. But like all this Sith lore, like basically the grand plan gets set back hundreds of years as a result of this right. incident. But like they, they, and they tell it all the way forward. Like Darth Tenebris had a master who was a Twi'lek uh, and like a really good uh, lightsaber, uh, uh, you know, uh, marks or whatever the hell you want to call it. Lightsaber, swordsman. swordsman. And, and it just kind of provides all this this like background, right? And Plagueis is constantly like kind of like talking this through with Palpatine. He explains that Darth Tenebris had like a very different approach to how to overthrow the Jedi and the Republic, which we talked about in the last episode. Plagueis is like the one who turns it around. Mm. He starts telling Palpatine the rule of two ends with us. And this is kind of the beginning of like the main like fallout between Palpatine and Plagueis. Right. Is basically Plagueis is like the rule of two, the master teaches everything to the apprentice, then the apprentice kills the master, who then takes on another apprentice, teaches him everything, who then kills the master, and so on and so forth. Right. Well, Plagueis is like, no, not anymore. Like, we're going to do, we are going to overthrow the Republic, and then it's going to be you and me forever. I'm going to figure out immortality. You're going to be the political face of all of this, and we're going to go. And Palpatine just kind of plays along. Right. And always just kind of is on board. But, and he never really expresses any sort of discontent about it until the very end. Right, which... We'll talk about it at the very end, but that's one of the biggest issues what I have about Disney's version of Palpatine, mm -hmm. uh, because it makes no sense uh, where they had Palpatine end up. Anyways, the, it, 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 well, it, it's it's a just a butchering of Palpatine a as butchering, a character, an absolute butchering yeah. that I that I agree with. Yeah. So from there. The, the next major step is Palpatine kind of makes a step into the uh, political realm. And the way that they do that is uh, Plagueis goes like, hey, it's time for you to commit your first assassination. And then he actually tells Palpatine the story of his first assassination, which is this really cool story about how he wanted to kill this specific executive that was causing problems for Rujus Gnome. Of, uh, I think it was one of the Sinar guys or something. Mm. But basically what ends up happening is they serve this like bloat eel or something. Oh, yeah. this, like, and it's like this fancy food that like has to be cut perfectly or it kills you. And then like they have like medical personnel on site while people are eating in case they die. And basically the dude that the Plagueis needs to assassinate eats the fish or eel or whatever. And Plagueis underneath the table just like force chokes him to death. <laughs> just starts choking him. Yeah, just chokes him to death. And then, and then they talk about how they do all of the right things in order to save the guy and he, he's not saved. And then how the people who serve the food are thrown in jail yeah all all of the <laughs> chefs get get thrown in prison for it it's hilarious but anyways he ends up asking palpatine has a best friend and it's this uh uh what's his name i have it written down here um vidar kim is his name he is best buddy and vidar kim's had a rough go of it his wife and kid died in an accident and mm -hmm. then and then he so then basically what happens is is palpatine uh uh, uh literally vidar kim wants to like the reason why they have to assassinate him is because his wife and kid died. He's kind of gone off the deep end and he wants to like rat everybody out and he wants to like rat on him uh, Damascus holdings. And he wants to basically to, he wants to take the whole Naboo trade Federation set up and, and just like, and just throw it all out into the public eye. And so Plagueis orders his assassination and play as after we can go into detail about that. But we're not going to, but he uh, assassinates Vidar Kim, but not personally because of the fact that Palpatine obviously does not want to have any sort of blood on his hands for his political journey. He ends up hiring a group of Maladian assassins. And the hit kind of gets botched, which comes back later because because it got botched, they want to help him out when the Maladians try to kill Plagueis, which we'll get to in a little bit. But uh, Vider Kim gets killed. Then Palpatine becomes the senator of Naboo. Right. So then it kind of goes through like Pal uh, Palpatine is on on uh, a Coruscant and he's kind of getting in on the the political side of things and everything's progressing as as normal. But <clears throat> basically, what ends up happening is over this extended period of time, as they're trying to help the Trade Federation and help build this, because basically what pa Plagueis is trying to do is he's trying to make it so that the outer portions of the galaxy are basically squeezed out. Yeah. And so that the government of the Republic is helping the inner core worlds, and they're all doing great, but everyone else is doing shitty, but then he wants these big guilds like the Commerce Guild and the Banking Clan and, and the Trade Federation and all of yeah. these cartels out there to basically be the guys that are helping the outer world right. so but that really it basically forms a schism. That's how he's trying to start the civil war, right? Well, in that process, Higo Damascus is doing a lot of screwing over of the Grand. Yeah. So the Grand, they end up hiring Maladian assassins to kill Whom Plagueis. are badass. Maladian yes. assassins are top-notch Definitely assassins. badasses. 
but it's a double hit because there's another hit that that goes out on Palpatine, and they actually drag Palpatine out to the to the works, which is that area that uh, where he ends up. Uh, we actually see live action Palpatine. That's where he meets Dooku at the mm-hmm. end of the Clone Wars movie, yep. Attack of the Clones. But like he's there and he's about to get killed, and uh, Pax Team, who's the guy who's uh, the, the leader of the Grand, is like over a, a comm call, like, "Yeah, guess what? We're about to kill you." Blah blah blah. And then at the last second. Sate Pestage, who's basically Palpatine's right hand man, comes flying in with all these guards, the sun guards, and Palpatine does not have to reveal himself. Mm-hmm. They kill all Palpatine those guys. Palpatine was uh, like legitimately mustering up the Force as this was going down because he thought he had to save himself. But then he ended up getting saved the last second, and he did not have to reveal himself as exactly. Lord. And it was, and it wasn't actually Sate Pestage that saved him. It was the, uh, it was the the sun guard, and it was Plagueis that saved Palpatine. Now it wasn't really saved because Palpatine would have been fine, but Plagueis identified the hit and and saved him. But Plagueis did not identify the hit that was called out for him. Sate Pestage comes running into Palpatine's office and is like, okay, I'm glad you're okay. Because I heard, as a courtesy, the Meladians had reached out to me because we botched the last hit. And they're like, by the way, there's a hit that's been ordered on Higo Damask, on Coruscant, blah, 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 something like that. So Palpatine's like, holy shit, the guys that tried to kill me were not Meladians. They're clearly going after Plagueis. So they run and at the same time at the Order of the Canted Circle where basically Higo Damask's right-hand man is getting inducted into this ceremony. We talked about this in the last episode, so we won't go into extensive detail, but they basically assassinate all of these Munes and Plagueis goes crazy. Yes, this scene, you guys... Please listen. What what podcast? It's it's listed under something with uh, Darth Plagueis in the title. I can't remember what the title of it is for our podcast where we talk about this. If you have not heard that part of the book, because we went into detail. Yeah, we it. won't go into detail for this one. Please go check it out. Because it was like it two is, episodes ago. It was the one the one most recently where we talked about Plagueis. It is uh, peak Star Wars mm. content. Well, yeah. so pa- yeah, it, the, the short version it's, is, it's is so Palpatine. Good. Palpatine, when he discovers that his master is in danger, he opens up his you know, because he's constantly closing himself off from the Force while he's on Coruscant because he can't reveal himself to the Jedi, and the Jedi are all over the place on this planet, right? So he opens himself up to the Force, and he senses the dark side, quote unquote, unspooling. Yeah. At this place, which he knows the Jedi can sense. Yes. So he goes to help, and literally, what's happening is as the Meladian assassins are murdering all these Munes, Plagueis, after getting severely wounded, like severely wounded, he's leaking blood. They like have like a ninja star that they throw at him, and then it lops off part of his jaw. Yeah, and <laughs> like, his neck. What? Yeah. yeah. So he's like, he's using the force to like stop the bleeding. It's this whole thing, but he's just like messing everybody up in this room. Like he's using a sonic boom weapon. He's using a force wave that vaporizes people. He's like breaking necks and stuff with his arms like he's just he's just messing everybody up palpatine and, and saint pestage come in at the last second too and help him kind of finish the deal although they kind of make you believe that palpatine or plagueis would have succeeded anyway mm-hmm. but they end up uh getting out of there and it ends up being essentially the most embarrassing moment of plagueis's kind of tenure and now he has to wear this like massive kind of like contraption to hold his neck together and what's really cool is for the rest of the book he sounds very mechanical oh yeah right they give him like like, raspy voice yeah and that's one of the 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 upsides yeah it is that's one of the upsides of the audiobooks is is you get to hear his voice following his massive injury oh yeah and and the big thing that happens in that scene is essentially palpatine knows that if he was able to feel the dark side he knows that the jedi were too yes yeah. So he basically goes like, "Master, the Jedi had to have felt that they're gonna be here." And Palpatine unleashes, or Plagueis unleashes one of the best one-liners. He goes like, "Good, let them come and smell the aroma of the dark side." Yeah. <laughs> and 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 the previous pod too, Jay's talked about how uh, uh, Plagueis is famous for his one-liners. Yes. There's another so part, and I ones. can't remember what it was, but. Um, he has to like kill someone and, he, and someone gets like cut. I can't remember what it was. And he's like, consider it cutting costs or something like that. It's like <laughs> it's so corny. It's the cutting. best. Cost yeah. cutting. It's the uh, best. So anyway, uh, right after that scene, Palpatine ends up going, they, they locate where the Gran are. And Palpatine, there's this really cool scene where Palpatine just murders all of them in cold blood and and burns the place down. At one point, he catches a glimpse of himself in the mirror and he's got like Sith eyes and his hair's all like this and like he's just crazy, right? So it skips way forward in the future. Mm -hmm. And basically what happens is is Plagueis, as a result of this latest incident, basically disappears into his research. Right. And essentially they, they divide and conquer. So Plagueis is like entirely invested in researching the deeper intricacies of the force while and Palpatine is a hundred percent. Yeah. And midichlorians and, and the extending life and all that stuff. Palpatine's off 
basically manipulating the political realm. Now, although Plagueis is involved there too. He's involved with like the clone army thing in particular. He's involved with like, like he's the one who sets up Sand Hill as the banking clan leader who right. ends up becoming the guy who, who starts the separatist movement or helps start the, the separatist movement, right? So like, but they're kind of dividing and conquering. They do reference these multiple scenes where like Plagueis and Pal- uh, Palpatine kind of do things together. And at mm-hmm. one point, at one point they conduct some sort of ritual to try to uh, uh, manipulate midi chlorians, and they like irrevo- irrevocably like shift the force. Yeah, and it turns out as we go into the future that ends up being basically the moment where Anakin is conceived. <laughs> Odd, <laughs> but like, and, and with the idea of the force always tries to balance itself out, right? Exactly, and like Palpatine, even in the moment as they shift the force, Palpatine is like really taken aback. Like you can tell, like. Palpatine at the end when he's just just eviscerating Plagueis verbally, <laughs> he kind of undercuts I think a lot of Plagueis' accomplishments, which I want to get to at the well, end because yeah. like, that's like a big picture thing. But like in the moment though, they 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 kind of manipulate the force and they have this kind of major breakthrough that ends up leading to the thing. Plagueis at one point uh, actually because uh, Venomous is still alive. There, yeah, this poor man, this poor this poor <laughs> Biff. So uh, uh, Plagueis at one point actually kills Venomous, brings him back to life, kills Venomous, brings him back to life, kills Venomous, brings him back to life, and then grants him everlasting death. But it essentially is like them figuring out how to manipulate midi chlorians to stay alive. Now Plagueis hasn't figured out how to do it to himself yet, right? But he's getting closer and closer and closer, right? Meanwhile, Palpatine is like continuing to make progress in the in the political realm. Well, and Palpatine's starting to get frustrated with things. Like Palpatine's starting to feel like a messenger more than anything else. Palpatine realizes that he's doing like a lot of the day to day work, whereas mm-hmm. Plagueis is essentially fiddling around in a lab letting his his home fall into disrepair he's becoming almost like disheveled uh in some in some ways he's becoming a creepy old man he's yeah and a hermit yes. at that so and, and he by the way doesn't sleep anymore yeah he yeah he no longer has to sleep he's figured out a way to not sleep uh, in part as a way to protect himself so mm-hmm. that he's never um you know, that that way his defenses are never down. It's an interesting concept, though, because at the end of the book, Plagueis kind of returns to the public realm. Mm-hmm. Because part of part of Plagueis' thing with Palpatine, because there's all these, like, moments in the later part of the book where, like, Palpatine and Plagueis are, like, having brainstorm sessions for how to overthrow the Republic. And they're kind of talking through all these things. And what ends up happening is, like, at one point... Palpatine is like, it should be you that's in the chair. And like, you can't really tell if Palpatine's like manipulating him or if he's like, I think he was. And I think he was too. But basically, what ends up happening is Plagueis goes like, no, 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 it's going to be you. But then after you get elected, you'll name me as co chancellor. Which is so cheesy. Which immediately you're like, no, that that would never fly, right? Plagueis has so much trust for Palpatine. He does. Way too much. It is ridiculous about. That is the worst decision you can make as a Sith Lord. As a Sith Lord, he he, he get out. Royally fucked up. Yeah. That said, like Palpatine and Plagueis accomplished so much together that they did kind of become like peers at the end. It it was kind of like a a thing, but but Plagueis just forgot the base tenet of the Sith belief, you know. But anyway, so they're they're like coming up with all these like machinations, and it, it basically they start to piece together a plan. And the plan is basically. They want to continue to foi- uh, uh, to to kind of uh, build the discontent between the two factions in the Republic, and they want to use Naboo as the catalyst. Yes. The original plan is to use Ars Varuna, who's the the guy who come, came after Bon Tapolo, as basically the the uh, in the Padme Amidala slot for this this move, and they were going to use the crisis on Naboo to vault. The plan was to use the crisis on Naboo to vault Palpatine into the Chancellorship. Then from there, start the Clone War so that they could give him emergency war powers, yeah. which would effectively make him a dictator. At, then, at, that, at that point, they could then trigger Order 66. And like the, so the plan is like starting to take shape. But this Ars Varuna guy is sick and tired of being under pa- a Plagueis' thumb. So he's like, screw this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, 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 get rid of Plagueis. So he actually gets in touch with Black Sun. And when he gets in touch with Black Sun, for anybody who the, doesn't know what Black Sun is, it's a crime syndicate. A big, yeah, one of the biggest crime syndicates in the, who Darth Maul ends up murdering all of them and then g- gaining control. Of. Yeah, important back plot which we didn't get to, and we won't go into too much detail. But basically, Palpatine they're mentioned ends in up, Solo. It's really he, cool. Yeah, Palpatine ends up. Uh, that's right. Black Sun was uh, heavily uh, featured in Solo. Mm-hmm. So 
Palpatine makes a visit to Dathomir and basically gets handed an infant Zabrak, Zabrak as a uh, as as a, basically as a caretaker. He uh, reveals it to to Plagueis, who's like, "You can train him as an assassin." Plagueis does get a little pissed off, and Palpatine gives him the Darth title, though that was a thing. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, they um um the baby Black a- Sun. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Plagueis is on. Not Sojourn, but a different planet at this point, even more remote, uh, where he's keeping all of his really creepy experiments. Sojourn <laughs> is where he does like the 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 you know the, the all the creepy shit with the rich guys, and then there's this other planet where he's got this other facility. Well, Black Sun, sh- Sun shows up, and uh, literally Jabba the Hutt is the one who finds out about the hit, yeah. and helps Plagueis. Palpatine found out about it too. And didn't reveal it because he thought Plagueis might get killed. And he actually yeah. reveals that in the final speech. He goes like, I thought Black Sun might have got it done if it wasn't for Jabba the Hutt saving your ass, basically. Right. So Black Sun comes and nukes his planet. Like, L- nukes legitimately it. nukes it. It, like, turns the surface to glass, like, nukes it and kills everything. And it's- what's so funny is because uh, Plagueis talks about how, even though it sucked, how it needed to happen. Yeah. He, he essentially he had done... Sad. Yeah, he gets sad. He had done the research that he could do. And when he talks about his lab... He actually uses the word love. Yeah. And and uh, Palpatine kind of, you know, asks Plagueis, he's like, you know, it's not very Sith-like to love anything. And and Plagueis is essentially like, it's the only word that I can use to yeah, describe like, it's how not passionate yeah. I am about this science, mm-hmm. uh, which is, you know, extending my life and understanding midichlorians. He specifically uses the phrase, it's not compassion, but yes. it's love. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but so uh, Jabba the Hutt ends up rescuing Plagueis, gets on board at the last second. They end up working out some deal now where basically Jabba wants to squeeze out Gardula and like take over the Tatooine operation. And a- Plagueis, another gem. Plagueis is like, gotcha, like we're good, sure. got you covered. And, and now they're kind of, he's kind of in debt to him, you know, obviously because yeah. he saved his ass. Uh, but so Plagueis is like, I'm going to kill Ars Varuna now. So Ars Varuna finds out that his hit fails. So he abdicates, gives up the throne. Oh, that was actually why he wanted to kill Plagueis. They had a conversation with Ars Varuna, and he was talking too negatively about Plagueis. Then Plagueis and Palpatine go, okay, Ars Varuna's not going to work. Let's go with this Padney to Barry chick, because we might be able to manipulate her a little bit easier. Yeah. Once they throw their support behind her, that's when Ars Varuna's like, screw you, I'm going to kill Plagueis, right? So after his hit fails, he abdicates. So he gives up the throne, Padme becomes queen. So it's like over already. But he disappears out into like some rural part of Naboo, and Plagueis is like, fine by me, great place to kill you, right? So Plagueis is like, I'm going to do this one myself. And so he's so low, oh, infil- right. infiltrates the facility, and he's got all these guards and shit, but it just doesn't matter. Gets into the master bedroom. <laughs> While this man is sleeping in bed. Yeah, tur- turns on, turns the light on a little bit, sits in a chair at the end of the bed so that he's barely uh, uh, invisible, and then basically wakes Ars Varuna up, who then turns on the light, sees Plagueis, and uh, Plagueis literally just begins to sit there and just suck the life force out of him. <laughs> he it, literally, he's like, I am telling your cells to die. Yeah. And he's basically using his force midichlorian manipulations to slowly kill Ars Varuna while, and then he reveals himself as the Dark Lord of the Sith to him mm-hmm. in like this final moment where, where he kills Ars Varuna. It's a really, really cool scene. It's it is basically really cool. the Basically the final major flex for Darth Plagueis right. in the book. Yeah, uh, he uses like terminology like "I'm gonna drop you at the doorstep of death" or something like that. Oh yeah, he's I like, mean, I'm, I'm gonna walk kid. you to the doorstep of death, and then I'm gonna shove you through. Or yeah, something. he's no, he, actually no. Palpatine uses that. That's oh a really? Oh okay. Line. All right, yeah. never mind then. I misspoke. But but the, the way that he talks about death to this man that as, as he's actively killing him is just incredibly interesting and dark. Yeah, he does say something along the lines of like "I will be with you on this journey." Like, yeah, d- like d- don't worry. <laughs> it's so weird. I'm not going anywhere. Like yeah, yeah I'll be here to help. Like, yeah. <laughs> You know, it's like, so bizarre. It, it, it's in, it's it's intense, and like Ars Varuna can't even get like really pissed off about it because he's kind of like, uh, like he's kind of sleepy. He's just, yeah, he's just kind of like fading. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Well, anyway, the uh, basically the the last major kind of portion of the book, there are multiple conversations between Palpatine and Plagueis and Count Dooku about his frustrations with the Jedi Order. Correct. Specifically, they're obsessed with prophecy. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, it's like a final straw for Dooku and. When Qui Gon Jinn shows up with Anakin and is like, and is like, this is the chosen one. Yeah. And then, but Dooku's straight up like, if they decide to train this kid, like I'm done. Like this yeah. is the stupidest thing I've ever he's heard. He's incredibly like, frustrated. He's, he's he's just done with it all. 
And uh, let's see if Rip can do this without knocking all our stuff over. Good boy. <laughs> Rip is a 110-pound dog. He can run through some stuff. So anyway, um, Dooku ends up – they kind of go through Dooku's schism with the Jedi Order. They talk a lot about the different uh, belief systems in the Jedi. Like uh, Qui-Gon Jinn is very much in this idea of the living force. Right. Whereas like a lot of the other Jedi are in this like – I can't remember what they call it, but it's like the uh, – there's a different kind of – interpretation of a relationship with the force and so Qui-Gon's even on a different faction with the other Jedi and then basically the last major kind of like manipulation is Plagueis becomes very interested in uh, Jedi Master sifo yeah, as essentially his means with which to create the army for the Correct. Republic and he basically keeps going like I have a fear that this is going to end up in a war and he starts planning this scene like 10 years right. earlier right and he's like, because at one point late in the book, he's like, do you remember that conversation we had like 10 years ago? Yep. And then he's, and he basically is planting the seed like, hey, we're going to need an army. Right, right. And then, um, so he, he manipulates sifo because sifo can actually see into the future as well. Somewhat. Yes. And sifo understands that there's a war mm-hmm. at hand. And then uh, this is when uh, Plagueis reveals the Camino cloners. Yes. Uh, which again, massive, massive tidbit in Star Wars lore. Really cool moment the first time he brings it up. He's about to reveal the location of Kamino or the Kamino cloners to Jedi Master Sifo right. Dyas and Count Dooku and, and 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 them, but he sees out of the corner of his eye um, the the chick, the, the librarian. The librarian yeah, I forget her name. I can't remember her name either. Uh, ah, that that bothers me. I know, dude. I know exactly who you're talking about. It's, it's the, the, the one that's like, elderly. if it's not in our charts, it does not exist. Yeah, it's the white-haired uh, librarian. Chick yeah. Who's... So he sees her, and and Plagueis gets overcome with like a sense from the force to not reveal the dark it. the dark side is explicit with Plagueis. yeah it's like do, like, not, do not reveal, reveal this yes, yeah so and thankfully he didn't so mm-hmm. he doesn't and but then he does reveal it later on to sifo and when he reveals it to sifo he's like by the way like uh i already have the ability to fund this whole thing i have this company uh it was like i can't remember the uh it was uh, Ro- rohana rothana rothana heavy engineering i think yeah. is what it was called is this company that's going to build all the ships and everything is like i've got it all set up all you got to do is basically say the word and at the end like he goes up to palpatine and he goes like uh he goes like uh palpatine goes like is is he going to do it like is he going to order the army and Plagueis goes like i think he will He's like, but even if he doesn't, we'll just place it in his name. But they pretty strongly hint that sifo himself actually places the order. Yeah, and he, and he does. Mm. He does. We know that that's, that's something that he actually does. Mm. Through uh, Clone Wars animated TV series. That's right. I think they reveal it in the... Yeah. yeah. So so uh, they, they, uh, at that point, though, the plan is getting ready to be set in motion. And so they do set the plan in motion, right? And so the very end of the book moves very fast. Basically... Like the Naboo situation goes on. There is this cool part at the end where like Anakin gets revealed and Plagueis starts to panic because he's like, oh shit, the force is fighting right. back, you yep. know? And at one point, like they're like, he won, uh, Palpatine's like, he won the Boon to Eve race on, on Tatooine. And, and like Plagueis is like a human won the yeah, Boon humans to Eve race. Yeah, humans just don't do And then he literally goes like, already the boy's actions echo across the stars, which yep. was like a cool kind of like one liner from Palpatine. But essentially what ends up happening is at the end, they're starting to whip up votes for for uh, Palpatine to win the chancellorship. And it also goes to the extent to where like Plagueis is like openly threatening certain members of the Senate to not even show up the oh, next right. day. Well, and it talks about um, Plagueis or uh, Palpatine's flourishing relationship with Chancellor v- Valorum. Yeah. And essentially uh, Palpatine is creating this great relationship with Chancellor Chancellor Valorum and behind his back, he's just getting Trying ready to, to stab him. him in his back. Yeah. yeah. Well, they, cause they, they actually like had like a, they basically generated a scandal. Cause there's a, there's a moment where, uh, uh, you realize in, in The Phantom Menace that Valorum has no power, which is right. what Palpatine tries to demonstrate to Padme so that she'll call for the vote of no confidence, right. right? And the reason why he has no power is he lost all of his power in a recent scandal where Palpatine and Plagueis like fake of uh, of uh, uh, directed a bunch of funds into Valorum shipping or and something it looked like really that. Sketchy. And it, it looked really sketchy and it got him in yeah. trouble, right? So, which is cool. I love that the, they go into those kinds of details. But the climax, the climax of the book is basically... They finally come out to the point where Plagueis and Palpatine realize, like, we've whipped up enough votes, like, he should win tomorrow. Yeah. And so they're, the they're, they're drinking wine, and they're celebrating, and uh, Plagueis is like, why don't you practice your speech? Really quick. So they, they talk about how 
Plagueis actually starts drinking multiple glasses or bottles of wine at the opera. At yeah, the opera at the house. opera, you're right. And I'm pretty sure it's the same opera that we get to see yes. Anakin Skywalker and Palpatine sit at, where he's like, you know, the, the famous line, have you ever heard of Darth Plagueis the Wise? Yes. Yeah. And they, they refer to, like, because there's like two, there's like the Galaxy's Opera, and then there's like a second opera that they go to that's like better for them or whatever. Right. So, but anyway, they, uh, Pal- Palpatine starts to go through his speech, and like his speech is like super cheesy and doesn't even make sense. It's like, it just starts with it being like, you know, throughout galactic history, there are people that sometimes are behind the scenes and don't get enough credit. That person for, for us is is Higo Damask. Right. And it's like, it, like as you're seeing it, you're like, this is, why would, like, this is weird. It's right? all too friendly. It's and, all too and friendly. And all too perfect. So he practices his speech like a bunch of times and Plagueis starts to like kind of sort of fall asleep and then finally convinces. And remember, Plagueis hasn't slept in like 15 years. Yeah, and there are like six bottles of this super expensive wine deep. Mm -hmm. And so finally, Palpatine's like, okay, I'm going to leave. And so Plagueis kind of like falls over on the couch and falls oh, asleep. No, it's um, Plagueis is like, all right, dude, we're done. Yeah, Plagueis like, is go like, home. we're done, dude, go home. Yeah, and then Palpatine's like, no, I'm going to do this one more time. Yeah. And then Plagueis has it and then allows himself to start to nod off. He falls asleep. Palpatine starts to walk away. And as he's walking away, Palpatine like in the moment goes, actually, now's the time. <laughs> yeah. And so he turns around and just unleashes the full power of the dark side and lightning directly onto his like breather mask thing. Mm-hmm. Which immediately causes um it immediately causes uh uh plague pl- pl- plague to like kind of like have issues breathing. So now he's already up against it. And plague is like kind of starts to get up like he's going to go again and then Palpatine hits him again and, and then like as he's laying there on the couch like Plagueis starts like trying to manipulate his own midi chlorians to try yes. to bring himself back to life and Palpatine just be- launches into a speech that is an all timer and just and what's an absolutely wild about this is Plagueis legitimately has zero chance of survival no. pretty much like it's not like there was some epic battle where they fought each other inside this high rise on Coruscant like legitimately envision the Dallas Cowboys playing football against some high school team. Yes. Like it is an absolute butchering. Well, but it's because he got caught off guard. Exactly. Like, this is an important, one of the things we've glossed over is as Plagueis comes back to Coruscant and back onto the galactic scene, there is a moment where Palpatine's like, oh shit. Like he's getting younger. Like they literally, <laughs> like, th- like, so Plagueis goes from being this old, right. washed up dude, but over that time, he figured out how to manipulate his own midi chlorians, and so when he sees him, when he sees him on Coruscant, he's like, he's like, his skin is getting younger. Yeah, he is carrying himself with more energy. He was like less disheveled. He even says at one point, he's like, when I would open myself up to the force to sense him, it was just like a, a giant orb of power. Like he was just like Plagueis is at an all time peak in power. Yeah, like it was pure Sith. Sutterfuge that Palpatine even managed to kill mm-hmm. him. Exactly, and, it, and 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 so he launches into this speech, and it's really cool because it's like it's it's got a symmetry to it. It's like Darth Plagueis the Wise, yeah, who in his time truly was, but then got so wrapped up in his own research, and he's like it, it, that he neglected the grand plan, and like yep. he just starts going on and on and on and on and on, and it, I think Palpatine got a little bit. And I get it because it's like he's angry. Gloating. He's, he, was, he's, he was gloating and he also – because he was like – he was like teacher, sure, but master, never. Right. And like, and then he keeps saying like I couldn't have done it without you but I was the one who did all this other stuff. And I'm like, well, that can't be true because he's the one who groomed the banking clan guy. He's the one who found the For Camino. Sure. He's the one who was threatening all the people behind the right. scenes to not vote. So that like – so like Palpatine definitely like gets a little – like uh, revisionist history mm-hmm. yes. with Plagueis at the end, but he basically talks him down as he's killing him. Dude, it, it's like, it, it, what was uh, interesting to me is is it's obvious that Palpatine has kind of forgotten where he came from. Mm-hmm. Like, Plagueis was an absolute legend, mm-hmm. right? And then he acts like he wasn't, which was a little bit frustrating for me, like, listening to the book. Oh, I, I felt like, bad for Plagueis. I, like, I know. I was <laughs> like, you kind of, and, and you almost start to enjoy, this is bizarre, you almost start to enjoy their relationship. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you do. Absolutely. And then you're almost kind of bummed that that relationship is over. It was so weird to go apart. Like, you're listening to, like, the climax of this book where you're just like, man, Palpatine is an absolute powerhouse. He's being a badass. He's killing his master. But then you're like, oh, but I really liked his relationship with Plagueis, you know? Well, because, like, Pal- Palpatine, would, they would, like, have these conversations. Palpatine would be like, yeah, we did this, this, and this. We accomplished that, blah, blah, blah. And then Plagueis would just be like, would be like, 
the dark side of the force is behind us and he's yeah, like leaning like, oh, into all these like cool. he, he keeps yeah. like l- unleashing all these like one liners and like kind of eccentric speak to kind of like break down how like because Plagueis is very much like everything is one gigantic scale in, right. the, in the force that's like shifting one way or another and it 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 it, it, it is it is super super interesting and and the, then there's the one liner that you mentioned where literally play uh, Palpatine looks at him and goes like my intention is not to get you to a place where you can bring yourself back from the death. He's like, my intention is to bring you to death's door and shove you through. Yeah, shove you through, yeah. And and, and, and basically the book ends with Pl- uh, Palpatine killing Plagueis, and then he kind of gets some anxiety because he feels like something, but really I think that centers more around like Anakin and like yeah, some it's, of the it's other... Something, um... Something amok happening with Anakin that he yeah. doesn't understand yet. And Darth Maul's dying at that point, which he doesn't realize. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is a weird scene at the very end where basically he has a conversation with Dooku about like how like we'll talk in the future after because Dooku right. ends up seceding and becoming a or uh, leaving the Jedi Order and becoming a Count. Um, Dooku also mentions that he's starting to get interested in in the dark side as a means of being more powerful and how the light side is weak uh, in a lot of ways. Yeah, p- C- Count Dooku basically comes out and says, like, I I would like to learn more about the Force than the Jedi. Tell right. Me. You know, yeah, and, yeah. And, and which, and actually there's a moment where Pal- there's actually a moment there at the end where Palpatine resisted the urge to reveal himself right then and there. Right. So we don't actually find, we actually find out in Jedi Tales, Tales yeah, of the Jedi. Yeah. How, how Dooku, Dooku actually turns, which is cool. And it's so cool because it, it it's a classic uh, Sith Lord story where Dooku's kind of actually a good guy and he's frustrated with the system. And then yep. the system is so bad that he ends up being a Sith Lord. Yep. That's legitimately how Bane comes about. Yep. Um, here's here's the, the final take is this book exemplifies why the last movie, episode nine, is so bad. It is an objective reason why it makes no sense for Palpatine to be back in control is because that was one of Palpatine's frustrations with Plagueis is that he was breaking the rule of two and trying to live for forever. Then all of a sudden Palpatine is living forever. He's got this clone of himself, you know, that's failing. And, and it's just a a perfect example of, of, of how Disney completely missed the mark. Well, and even then, like, even if you were like, okay, well, he did it to save the Sith because he was the only remaining Sith Lord. He had to stay alive so he can train someone. He literally was like, he literally is just trying to get Ray to kill him. Right. Strike me down and take my spot. It's like, you're, you're going to train her at some but point? But I, like, yeah. It, make, it, like, it, it, it was all like, it was the strike me down thing was like, a, even that was a ripoff of like the strike Vader down thing. Right. You know what I mean? No, it was. And, and you didn't know if, if, um, Palpatine was going to be able to somehow take over Rey at that point if she did strike him down. Like it, it, to me, it seemed like Palpatine was always trying to like last, you know, li- live for forever, which yes. makes no sense. No, and, you know? and that is a great point because he actually straight up says like to Plagueis in his speech. And again, like I encourage you guys, if you're going to do anything, read the speech. Like yeah, and, like and I, I speech, bet you could find it. The speech online. at the end is great, but like he at one point literally says like like he became so. It was almost he basically accused Plagueis of being selfish, mm-hmm. even within the context of the Sith. Yes, like, like because they in the book in the meat and potatoes of the book they refer to it as like Plagueis is research, is diving into the Force, Palpatine's diving into politics, but Pal- Palpatine's more like Plagueis is diving into his own self preservation, exactly. Whereas Palpatine Which is diving him. into the Sith preservation yeah. and like the grand plan and stuff. Um, that is an interesting point, though, that you bring up that I didn't think about. Where where there is some lineage of the of the Sith that needs to exist, and that and and by by Darth Sidious doing his essence transfer, that is the only way that the Sith lineage could have continued. That's a really good point. I mean, that well, that is that is somewhat of a redeeming quality here, I guess. The bigger issue is not Palpatine trying to survive. That makes some sense. It was just the execution of it, which was so terrible. Wano would have been dope if they would have just leaned into Snoke, who is an incredible character, and mm-hmm. made him a Sith Lord. It was a huge like, mistake. Come on. The, the you know, and this is the last thing I'll say, and then we'll get out of here, but, like, they're... Um, there was this moment in uh, the Thrawn book that I was just reading. So the first Thrawn book, at the very end, if you remember, uh, they drop Cadet Vanto, or not, uh, I mean, excuse me, Lieutenant Commander Vanto, uh-huh. uh, off with Admiral Arlani, uh-huh. and she refers to themselves as the Chith, Chiss Defense Fleet, which mm-hmm. she's not. She's not in the Chiss Defense Fleet. She's in the Chiss Expansionary Defense Fleet. But it was interesting because I can tell what happened was is they wrote the first book, and everyone loved it, and so they signed him up for five more. Mm-hmm. Uh, Timothy's mm-hmm. on, yeah. And so then what happened was is Timothy Zahn sat down, you can tell, 
and he completely outlined the whole thing. Right. Because every single one of the other five books involves the Grisk. So there's a large picture kind of like uh, entity that they're building. Correct. Also, when we uh, meet Thrawn from Anakin in the second Thrawn book, Mm -hmm. uh, Thrawn introduces himself as Mithran Yoroto of the expansionary defense fleet. Mm Mm-hmm. And then he refers to the, uh, you know, the entities in the unknown regions and stuff. And so you can tell, like, Timothy Zahn took, a, took the time to plan the whole thing out. Plot within plot. And then that way, when he went to go write the books, like, he it, was building to... It's like it made such sense, a, it's yeah? such a, It made sense. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> Star Wars is very historical, obviously. Like, yeah. we literally just spent an hour talking about the history of Star Wars yeah. and how important it is. Disney just completely just... Didn't pay attention to to, pay attention. to to any like historical constructs over the span of three movies that literally were so disjointed, they they were hardly even Star Wars. It's unconscionable. We won't get into it. Yeah, we, we can save it for another day. All right, guys, that is all we have for today. As always, we sincerely appreciate you guys for supporting the show. Happy New Year. Uh, like we said earlier, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and we will see you guys in a week. Thanks a lot.